Alright, so, uh, transfiguration class. Yeah, transfiguration. I suck at pronouncing things sometimes. Really, though, these portrait shortcuts are a pretty handy way to get around the castle. I'm glad this game has them. I think we'll need to buy a password from Fred and George's shop to see what's behind this portrait. The portrait! <laughs> I'm not sure if it's true every single time, but it seems like the suits of armor that are holding shields require three Depulso spells to be cast at once, while the suits of armor without a shield only require one spellcaster to wreck their shit. It's weird how I feel like I can fly off that bench just by walking off of it sideways. And I also feel like there's something behind that portrait since I can stick my head through it while jumping. Look at this picture. That's just weird. Like, I don't know. Why have a chest with one lock if you're just going to hide it behind a door with three of the same locks on it already? Yeah, of course we can cast a triple Depulso spell through that student. Ooh, looky looky! It's Weasel, Grunge, and Potty! Peeves! More like... piss. I don't like the look of that armor. Why is Peeves able to lock students in a room? Why do you need gates to descend from the top of a doorway? Is that like the equivalent of doors automatically closing in the Muggle world to stop the spread of fire, but here the gates stop non-ghost monsters from roaming around too far? Whoa, what the fuck was that? Not only did our three protagonists teleport into a different position, but Harry and Hermione start this battle while facing in the wrong direction. What's up with that? Okay, I wonder how much harder they could have possibly made this. Harry, what the fuck do you think I'm doing? We're only two seconds into this battle and I didn't even have a chance to do anything yet. Yeah, seriously, be more careful. The most dangerous thing here is the armor flying off and hitting you in the face. That's actually more dangerous than Peeves himself because once again, he just floats around not attacking you and basically acting as defenseless as possible aside from drifting left and right in a consistent and easy to follow pattern. You were brilliant, Ron. It's easy to be brilliant when you're scared half to death. Oh, Peeves isn't quite that bad. Peeves has probably made us late. True, Peeves probably has made a slate. Let me just run around the room like an idiot for a few seconds before we continue to class. Okay, no beans in there. Hello, and welcome to Transfiguration class. One of the most advanced Transfiguration spells enables a wizard to become an Animagus. Animagi can transform themselves into animals, and then back into people. Someone walking out of class? <laughs> yeah, but the professor transforming into a cat is probably one of the more interesting animation sequences in this game. In my opinion, I don't know. The cat certainly looked more like a cat than Crookshanks did in the train car. Now for today's lesson, the Draconifers and Lepifors spells. Miss Granger, perhaps you'd grace the class by having a go at the exercise I've prepared. Me? Oh, yes! If you'll just step through this door, then... Let's begin with the Lapifors spell, Miss Granger. Right. Lapifors. The transformation of a small object into a rabbit. Correct, Miss Granger. Five house points for Gryffindor. Does said small object have to be in the shape of a rabbit to begin with? It seems like cheating, although we are only learning this for the first time. Yeah, I could have guessed to use the arrow keys on my own. 
push Again, the, the right mouse button makes a student jump right already, so... Jumps. Press the enter key any time you wish to stop the spell. Or simply complete the task at hand with the rabbit, and the spell will stop on its own. Wow, this requires quite well a bit done. of explanation. Now, take note of the mound of earth. Position the rabbit on top of the dirt, and press the left mouse button to begin digging. Right. Use the left mouse button to chew or dig. Splendid, Miss Granger. It's weird how the student who has the best grades gets the least dangerous course exercise. But I guess the girl in our trio had to get the pretty flowery garden instead of getting any kind of dark dungeon area. Remember that I've played this game before, so I sort of remember what's coming up, but both Ron and Harry get course exercises where they can both potentially fall into an abyss. I'm not sure it's possible for Hermione to do that in her lesson here, even intentionally. It's also less difficult to accidentally miss a shield in this course, since they're mostly located along the relatively straightforward pathways where Hermione walks. How does this even work? Can Hermione's brain telepathically receive the experiences of the rabbit through its five senses? If the rabbit is furry, does that make Hermione a furry? Does she have to stand there and make weird mouth motions in order to make the rabbit chew, or does she just think it and therefore will it through the rabbit? What if the rabbit needs to take a shit? Or maybe it's never able to, since it only ate grass mere seconds ago. Cool, the bunny can also stick its head through a solid wall too. That would have made more sense if it were a hedge instead of a stone ledge though. If I remember correctly, I'm supposed to do something with that well. Well, where the fuck do I go? Oh. <sighs> I hate it when I spend a while looking for something and it was just out there in plain view the whole time. The worst part is, is that there's this video recording of me not using my eyes for half a minute. Okay, come on. Get in there. Jeez. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a way to strap to the left or right as a bunny, so you're forced to slowly move backwards or make controlled hops forwards if you only need to move a little bit, such as when you want to get an individual bean. It's, it's not too difficult to manage, though. I guess the rabbit isn't able to pick up the challenge shield, even though it can collect beans. Now let's move on to the Draconicor spell. Cast on the dragon statue, Miss Granger, to transform it into a living creature. Draconicor! Oh, brilliant! Now, listen closely. To proceed, you will need to use the dragon to get the fireball pick up. Then fly up and land on a platform. Finally, you must light the torch to complete this part of the challenge. Off you go, Miss Granger. Click the spacebar to make the dragon fly. Use the arrow keys to make it turn. Click the left mouse button to make the dragon breathe fire. Once he's grabbed a fireball pickup, the dragon will produce one blast of flames for each pickup. <sighs> okay, first of all, you don't click a spacebar. Secondly, Hermione uses a different spell for the rabbit and dragon? Why? Sure, they're different animals, but it's essentially the same process going on here, right? Some spells even require more than just the incantation in our movement, such as visualizing a happy memory when repelling Dementors. Why not just require the spellcaster to visualize the animal or object that they want to transfigure out of another object? And third, I thought the whole point of transfiguration was to transform anything into anything else. Why do we need animal-shaped statues to transfigure said animal out of a stone? 
In the second movie, the students were required to transform an animal into a goblet. Granted, it's a living creature being turned into an inanimate object instead of the other way around, but they didn't need a cup-shaped creature to start off with. And that was in a class for second years. Hermione should be more than capable of doing that much. Sorry, but if I backed up away from that other cracker, then I probably wouldn't have been able to throw the first cracker far enough to hit the imp. How much damage did that even do? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Suck it up. How do I get back up there? Oh, okay. There's stairs here, effectively. Seems straightforward enough. I forgot to check if there was anything up here behind the dragon. And there's not, so here we go. What the fuck? Get out there! That could prove to be a major problem if one of the hardest parts about controlling this dragon is moving through a vertically narrow space. His wings should be soft and flexible, though, not a rigid board. And staying in a constant turn while in flight isn't much fun, either. You have to keep sweeping the mouse in whatever direction you want to turn towards. And I missed the blue bean a second time. Yep, somehow I missed the mark when shooting a fucking fireball out of the mouth. Alright, let's try again. At least the rabbits and dragons are capable of picking up beans. I guess they just magically teleport into Hermione's pockets. Like I said, nowhere for Hermione to fall into an abyss, just a pretty little pumpkin patch. Okay, then I assume there's some way to easily get back up here. A sponge of high tile, good. It's a big-ass pumpkin in the middle, though. Let's see what this is. Well, to be honest, I was expecting multiple pumpkin pasties to come out of that. But a card is fine, too. Well, let's see. Five shields. So, assuming I didn't miss any of them yet, then we're about halfway done with the lesson. Ten beans, I think. It's a minuscule amount here and there, but it all adds up to being able to buy as many chocolate frogs as you want that you can't fucking carry with you. Seriously, what's with all the frogs you get throughout the lessons? Why would you ever need to buy one of... one with beans? Seriously. I do like the soft music that plays every time I take control of the rabbit, though. Cool, I get to belch fire again. Huh, the music didn't stop either. I thought it had in the past whenever control of the rabbit was given up. Don't impale your head, little dragon. <laughs> Look at him waddling along. At least the wings aren't clipping this wall when I hop from one ledge to another. That's definitely helpful. He'd probably fall off and hit the ground instead of taking flight. Now, is it ever possible for a fire-breathing dragon to burn its own mouth by eating something that's too hot? Random thought. Okay, so I have to pound out a large staircase for Hermione to climb up, I remember now. Get the beans, and I missed one. That's fucking great. Well, I'll just go for the others. No! Damn it! Oh, Christ. Ugh. Why the fuck did I suck so badly at making a smooth turn and missing that many beans? Alright, I'll fix this. Oh my god. And then I missed three of the four beans again on the way down! I'm 
fucking pathetic, I swear. Fucking finally. That's unbelievable how badly I messed all that up. Okay, Hermione should be able to climb up these large, troll-sized stairs now. How come sometimes a suit of armor will dispense all the means at once, and other times it ejects them towards you one at a time? It's annoying when it goes slow on purpose. Hey, we've done something like this before. At least we're spared from having to look at someone's portrait again this time around. Like, seriously, who the fuck takes a picture of the back of their head anyways? It still bugs me. Okay, it's not like this part of the level was in any way challenging already, but how did they not randomize the order that the pictures appear in on the faces of each cube? Like, surely that wouldn't have required too much additional time and resources to get right. This, Miss Granger, is a Bundyman. A Bundyman will expel a foul trail of slime that you will need to avoid. Oh, it's repulsive! You can cast Richter Simpra to stun a Bundyman, then, if you're quick enough, you can jump on top of it to see if it will produce a reward. Break to Sephra! Cool, pumpkins. What the fuck? Yeah, apparently Abundamon's gas or fumes or whatever can hang around long enough to hurt you even if you already stomped that shit. I guess in a realistic way that makes sense, because the fumes wouldn't actually disappear in an instant, but when you implicitly expect a reduced commitment to mirroring the rules of reality in an interactive form of escapism, or even explicitly anticipate outright faulty quote-unquote video game logic once in a while, stuff like that surprises you nonetheless. It's not a bad thing really, but sometimes you just don't expect something like that, but then when it hits you, you feel like an idiot. Okay, it sounded like Hermione got hit by something, but even though her life bar displayed itself just then, it looks like she still has a full health anyways. Yeah, there it is again. I think the Bundemon is hitting her, but not doing any damage. It would be bullshit if you did take damage in a video game while you were unable to defend yourself, so they did the right thing here, but... Did the Bundemon disappear? It's just gone now. Weird. It's also just funny watching her picture coming up again and again to alert you repeatedly that, yeah, she still has full health. I wonder if the rabbit can take damage from a Bundyman. Maybe I should have tested that. Oh yeah, I had an actual objective to complete with the rabbit aside from collecting beans. Oh, a hidden area? How are you going to count that as a hidden area if you needed to access it to get it to the shield? Yeah, I guess I'm done here. I don't know. Six at once? No problem for Hermione fucking Granger. She can deal with anything. Fuck. Okay, let's try this again. No, you're supposed to pick it up. Hurry now. Damn it! Hermione, what the fuck? Congrats, you finally got one. Now just five more to deal with. Are you serious? Stop running past them. This is horseshit. Okay, you got two at once that time, so that's good. <sighs> okay, that's finally over. One of the nice things about switching back and forth between first-person and third-person narration is that I can just blame the in-game characters whenever I fuck up something like that. Instead of saying, I'm doing a shitty job here, I can just yell at the character for appearing to act like a dunce, as if it was part of some shtick. Oh boy, another image-matching game. 
We're truly pushing the intellectual limits of the smartest girl in school right now. At least they didn't mindlessly sync up all the positions for each picture like the last time. Although, they probably put more effort into this one so you wouldn't always get all three rewards at once. Somehow I feel like that took me a few seconds longer to get than it should have. But okay, I got the card and the pumpkins back to back. Oh. How the fuck did I misfire and move the shield on the brown ring away from where it needed to be? That's embarrassing. Awesome. Nine shields now. So I'll definitely get into the bean bonus room, since you have to get the final shield in order to trigger that cutscene that ends the lesson. Why did the soft music start? I didn't transfigure a rabbit or do anything else yet. There's a Bundeman coming up there, but why bother to stop and mess around with it? Oh, here comes another one. Oh yeah, I have to cast at it first. Damn it! I wanted to bounce off one Bundyman and land on the other one like Mario bouncing on two Goombas in a row. Didn't work out very well then, and I don't know if I'll have a chance to try again elsewhere. I'm sure that's easy enough to unlock later on. Oh, okay, here we go. Got it. No problem. The pumpkin, too. For fuck's sake. Another chocolate frog, at least. I guess I can't get that cauldron cake back there while controlling Armani. I'll just drop down real quick. Wait, what? I can't? Oh, I have to turn around. Seriously, how hard is it for the dragon to walk backwards to get that cauldron cake? So I've got another piece of unused dialogue for you. I mentioned back in episode 2 that some bits of data were for characters that never even appear in this game. Well, one of those characters is Professor Snape. Seriously, you never see him anywhere in the Prisoner of Azkaban video game, at least for the PC version. Anyways, it does sound like the developers did plan at one point to have him in the game, which would make sense, since he was present in the last two games and he's a major character in general, but he was cut out for some reason. But whatever preparations were made, such as recording pieces of dialogue for him, they were left within the other game files anyways. Okay, and I can't get the shield as a dragon either. But yeah, here's an example of Snape's dialogue that was cut out. Shouldn't you three be heading out to the paddock for your care of magical creatures, class? I believe your little friend, Mr. Longbottom, is outside waiting for you. I just think that's so cool to find leftovers like that. It's a shame he was cut out, though. This game was released in the middle of 2004, so it's not like they had to rush this game in order to sell it in time for the Christmas holiday. Nicely done, Miss Granger. You've completed the challenge. You've collected all ten challenge shields, which means I get to go to the bean bonus room. Fantastic! Was there a bunny somewhere in here? There had to be, there were places for it to chew, and... Shit, there was probably something inside the central pillar that I could have gotten. I hope it wasn't a card, I don't want to go back through this whole lesson just to check that one thing. Well, this bean bonus room looks more generous, there are several pumpkin pasties and cauldron cakes in here. And hopefully once again I'm more efficient at moving through this area. But, back to Snape. There are other bits of dialogue I could share here. It's probably more interesting than hearing me talk about getting more beans. Move along, you three. Time for defense against the Dark Arts class. You do remember where the third floor is, don't you? Why aren't you in charms class, Potter? Trouble finding your way to the second floor? Potter! Weasley! Miss Granger! Is there some reason you aren't in Transfiguration class? Those were the only four bits of Snape dialogue that I could find. Now it's possible that there's more of him hidden elsewhere, but I'm not going to go listening through another 2600 audio files to find out. Usually a character's pieces of dialogue are grouped together, so I only saw four lines from Snape. 
Before him, you get clips of Sirius Black, and then after Snape, it's just a bunch of rude remarks from generic Slytherin students. And I've also mentioned the Cutting Room Floor website in past Harry Potter videos that I've done, which is a great website, by the way, if you haven't checked it out yet. I'll leave a link to the Prisoner of Azkaban article in this video description. And they've got a lot of unused pieces of game data listed in their article for the Windows version of this game, but... For whatever reason, at least as of the time I uploaded this video, there's no information about the unused bits of dialogue. Maybe if I have time, I'll make an account there and try to add some myself, but there's also likely a bunch of lines from Harry and other major characters that are never used either, and I'm not about to try and figure out what counts as a used or unused, or since there's so much dialogue from them, but I could at least get the ball rolling by adding Snape's lines. Hermione! There you are! How was it? Excellent. I can turn things into dragons now. Wicked! You mean the flying, roaring, burn down the village sort of dragon? Um, no. It's just a very small, transfigured dragon. Oh, shame. You can have another go at the challenge if you like, Hermione. We can come back and do it another time. What? You thought I had anything else to say? Nah, I'm done here.